Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to have a look at this semi-replica of an Alvin Clark telescope that I made. I made all of the components that you see here, including the objective, which was a long story. Let me tell you, that was a lot of work. Um, but I made everything. Everything that you see is made by me, except for the lenses and the finder. A couple of small, odd bits and pieces here and there, but everything else made by me. Uh, so I'm quite proud of this telescope, and I hope you enjoy having a look at it. Many years ago, I made that telescope over there. That's a about a five and three quarter inch f8 reflector. I made the mirror, I ground and polished the mirror, and the whole bit. That was quite thrilling. It was really really cool to make the mirror from scratch and the whole bit. And it performs quite well. It's actually a very very good quality telescope. Uh, about 10 years ago, I decided I should have a, a refractor to go with that. So I decided I wanted to make a refractor, make the objective. The lens is much more complicated than a mirror. There are four optical surfaces, so it's a more complicated deal. Bought a kit, bought the abrasives, bought the whole thing, got all set up, and made the lens. And when I made the lens, eh, I didn't do such a great job. So the objective is not great. But I decided, well, let's make a display piece to go with that. So I built this as a display piece to hold the lens. The lens is functional, but not great. The uh, telescope here is functional. It's mostly a display piece though, but it's fully functional. Everything here works, but it lives in my living room. It doesn't go outside. Uh, it's not a daily driver. I've got a lot of really high quality telescopes. This one is pretty much for display, lives in my living room. This is the tripod, and as you can see, it's got three individual spreader arms, which is, I think, a superb system. You can adjust this, but it makes it very, very sturdy, and at the same time, you can fold it up and make it very portable. Now, here's the mount. See that it spins and swivels there. It has a nice big spigot knob to hold it on. This comes from counterweights. Here we have it. I have Clutch is pretty loose here, so it can move around fairly freely. When I made this mount, I was attempting to come close to an Alvin Clark mount, and I, I looked at the plans for how an Alvin Clark works. And this, it works exactly the same way. It's made uh, quite differently. The Alvin Clark was castings. This is all made of aluminum billet with some uh, material here to fill it in to make it look like a casting. But it works the same way. Let me show you how you change the... It's a little tricky. A little off balance with all the counterweights and everything on there, but that's how you do that. Now this thing tightens down set it to a certain latitude and actually there's one be behind you have to set them both really set them good and tight they're big wing nuts for a reason there's so that's how you adjust the latitude it's not really high precision but it's good enough for visual work the clutch for the right ascension is right here so you can tighten it down Really make it nice and tight so that it's pretty darn stiff. Can't really stop it, but it's pretty stiff there. You can loosen it way down to almost nothing. We can control the friction there. Friction, this mount is all about friction control. It's real, really, really tricky to get the friction down right. That's why this is like that. Same thing over here, the, the declination friction control is this big knob here. 
I'm squeezing down on a washer in there that tightens it up. This lever arm is so long, it's almost impossible for a little nut like that to do the whole job. And it, it really doesn't have to. All it has to do is hold it well enough so that this will work. I think you can see that moving now. I hob these gears. These are... I, <laughs> I actually hob these these gears uh, on my lathe, which was a tricky proposition to do. Here's a close-up of the... This is the right ascension circle, which is, of course, floating. Uh, this is the friction lock here. And then I'll lock it down, and then it should, if everything works right, it should follow it. I spent some... It was quite a bit of effort to engrave these setting circles. That was a lot of work. And then, um, unfortunately, I, was, I don't know how to engrave. <laughs> I don't have an engraving machine to engrave these, so I had to stamp these setting circles. That was a lot of work, too, even just with stamping them. Let me show you that. This is buttery smooth. It's, uh, it's a Crayford focuser. These two chunks of brass here are pushing down on some bearings, which are bearing against this tube here, which then can go back and forth. And of course, like any Crayford, you have good control over the friction. The big knobs really make a difference here. Uh, the large knobs make it not quite as good as a two-speed focuser, but much better than a little tiny knob. So the extra oversized knobs really do help. Here's the finder on this scope. And I want you to notice the finder rings. I spent a lot of time, you know, I'm a big fan of Alvin Clark finder rings. So I spent a lot of time trying to get that as best I could. And get that beautiful hourglass shape. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's close. This is the book I used when making the telescope. This is the first and only refractor I've ever made from scratch. I started with a kit from Newport Glassworks. It's a four inch kit uh, meant for an oil spaced objective. And I used the design as they specified. However, I had to modify it because what happened was detailed in this <laughs> look at this notebook this is many 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 months of work anyway I I started out and I was making measurements and all that stuff and I got carried away with one of the grits and I went too far so I had to change it from a four inch f15 something like that it ended up that I had a turned edge anyway so as a result, I've got a three and a half inch F15, um, which is actually not bad. <laughs> Here are all my notes. Oh man, I remember the pain of this. It was such a struggle. I think there's some of the drawings of what, what I was getting for a while. And I started to get some of this nonsense. Look, you can see the lens is getting better. So here, this is probably close to the final result. Something like that. Because of the unfortunate episode with uh, going too far with the rough grinding, <laughs> um, this lens does have quite a few scratches. I was unable to polish all of those out. And I probably could have spent five years polishing and never would have gotten rid of those. So I ended up uh, leaving it at this particular form. It's really not that bad. A lot of people would look at this lens and say, you can't use this lens, it's total junk. Um, and it's certainly not perfect. It suffers from a lack of contrast because of these scratches. But uh, it's not bad. It shows Cassini's division, so it's not that bad. Tonight there's gonna be a shootout between my Alvin Clark semi-replica and the TS-80 semi-apo. This, this is a beautiful, a superb telescope. And to make the competition fair, I'm going to hamstring the beautiful TS-80 by putting an appetizing mask on the front. This is a uh, piece of window screen. So that now, the TS-80 has the same 
difficulties as my Alvin Clark. Here are the stages that I went through in reducing the mask on the TS-80. I started with it fully covered, it was terrible. And then I reduced the amount of obscuration and I opened up the aperture and opened it up and opened it up till finally I got to probably 80%, 85, 90% of the aperture of the TS-80 was working. And it was roughly equivalent to this scope. So it's a decent scope, it's not bad at all. And to prove that to you, here are some pictures. The video was taken with a terribly cheap cell phone mount on the, on the, and a, a really cheap eyepiece too. So it's not very good quality, but it does demonstrate that the thing is not a total pig. It is very gratifying to be able to look through a telescope that you have made on your own from scratch. The image wasn't as good through this scope as through the Takahashi TS-80, but it was still very, very enjoyable. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this Alvin Clark replica. Thank you very much for watching.